The mesh promises great things for the future. But what does it do for us today? Hello, I'm Philip Ann Baker, and in this presentation, I'm going to be showing how the mesh can be used to configure SSH, the remote terminal uh, program. And this is a problem that was suggested to me by Dave, David Clark, one of the founders of the internet. Uh, and it's a really fascinating problem because SSH looks like it's a really, really easy program to use. And at some level it is. However, there's a little interesting uh, configuration issue that comes up. You, to configure SSH, you need to bring up a terminal window and configure the program, which is fine if you are sitting at the machine where you're going to be, uh, be running it. But what if you're not at that machine? What if you're trying to configure a remote machine? Well, now we need SSH configured so that we can configure SSH. And if we make a mistake while we're configuring SSH and moving from the default configuration to the particular configuration we want, oh dear, well, that's a case where now people have may have to get on planes and fly the other side of the country. And yes, I know that that has happened. You know, people I've worked with have had to be the people who've gone on planes. So there's a bootstrap problem. The other problem that comes up is that while it's really easy to use SSH um, in a reasonably secure way, Best practice requires quite a bit of time and effort, and not everybody is willing to do that. Of course, you are, but you know your corporate security doesn't just depend on you, it also depends on everybody else who works with. So even though you obviously are the sort of person who has a different SSH key for every device they are going to use as a client, Absolutely, and you maintain them properly. Yes, absolutely. Your enterprise can still be hosed if just one of your co-workers is not quite as on the ball as you are. Okay, so what is SSH anyway? Well, we have a set of hosts. And we have a set of client devices. And Alice can connect to any of the hosts uh, using whichever client device, you know, her desktop, her laptop, uh, whatever she might need. And it will establish a secure tunnel between them. Uh, when SSH was first developed, it was originally proposed as a uh, app applying SSL to um, the existing remote terminal uh, thing, uh, Telnet, and then they, you know, the designer realized that they needed to move away from pure SSH because there were a few subtle traffic analysis bugs, and you know, it's become a separate thing over time. But so each of the hosts has a host key pair, and so it has a public key. And each of the clients has a, um, well, each user creates a public private key pair. And in the ideal case, we'll have a different one on each one of the clients. But here's the thing, in order to get access from the client to the host, there is a list in the host of all the authorized keys uh, for connecting to that to connecting to each particular account, and that set of keys, uh, you know, if I add a device, well, I've got to update all my keys and all my hosts and so on, which it starts to become quite uh, tricky. So, there are two options that the uh, mesh provides for simplifying administration of SSH. The first one uh, comes from the use the same user key set 
for every SSH client device. So this isn't ideal because if we use the same public private key on every single one of our devices and we lose a device and you know that device is stolen, well, the private key is on it when it's stolen and oh dear, well, now the thief has got access to our hosts. That's not good. The other, uh, so, so one way that we can use uh, the mesh or rather just UDF we don't need to configure a mesh profile at all, is to use UDF key generation uh, and a Z key to generate a public-private key pair for use with SSH and generate that public-private key pair from a strong password. And so we generate a random number, it's got you know, 100 bits, 120 bits, 140 bits worth of randomness in it. And we use that as our seed for our random number generator that generates our public-private key. And that means that we overcome the single biggest hole in SSH configuration, which is, of course, people email their SSH private key from one device to another. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, and the, the other way that it happens is that they put their private key on a share so that they have the share. Oh. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're going, to, the problem with using secrets to uh, authenticate, if you then give that secret to a person and you don't give them instructions on how to manage that secret uh, carefully, they're almost certainly going to get it wrong because keeping secret secrets is actually quite difficult. So, so we can use a Z key, which is a random number, to generate our SSH key. And so it'll look something like Z. Yes. A long string. And we can generate our key on this device, this device, and this device. And so that gets around the problem of the private key being emailed from one device to another. But it's not really very secure because we've now got the same key on every device. And what we really want to do is to have a different key on every device. And that is, of course, what the mesh provides. So Alice can create a Mesh account and can activate each of the devices that she wants to use with SSH uh, to generate a different key for each device. And we use the same metacryptography that we used in the Mesh itself so that we generate really strong keys that are bound to the device and cannot be removed from the device if we've got hardware support split control, yeah, we, we can do all that stuff. And of course the uh, tool, uh, it doesn't do it now, but we can add the ability to generate any sort of SSH certificate we might need. And so the device activation uh, is you know, relatively straightforward. There's one small twist that um, I've not yet quite got my ha head around for the specification, and that is if you're an outsourced sysadmin. So you're a contractor and you've got say five, six clients, maybe you've got more. And you're managing, you know, a law firm here, an accountancy firm here, and so on. You might want to have separate SSH accounts for managing your keys for the different clients that you have differently. So that if you stop servicing that client, you can just kill all the material connected with that particular client in one go and you know be done so that's one little detail that uh, you know it just needs to be properly f and fully specified and we can get it into the spec but that's the uh, you know that's the device activation and it's relatively straightforward because the constraints of the problem drive the whole architecture you write out the constraints and you can see that Okay, so the mesh application profile has to have this information, has to have a name so you can have multiple profiles, 
has to have a list of the devices activated and has to have a list of the server public keys or SSH trust routes. Um, how large does this need to be? Well, question that then comes up is how many hosts are we going to be managing? You know, is it going to be tens? Is it going to be hundreds? Is it going to be thousands? And there's a small question there, should it be part of the application profile describing the SSH account? Or should it be, should there be a separate catalog for maintaining these entries? At the moment, I'm thinking about the case where we just have a separate account. And so we go through that, and that is the easy part, because that's the part of this problem that is entirely under control of the person who's using the mesh. Yeah, if Alice is a mesh user, she can do her mesh client configuration herself in most enterprises. The only reason that she wouldn't be able to is for the enterprises that already have some sort of SSH management tool installed that she's mandated to use. Okay, so that's, that's one way we can do. The second, the, the other, um, so that's one half of the problem. The harder part is updating the authorization in the hosts so that this host will allow Alice to connect from any of these devices. And this is quite tricky. And the reason for this is that at root, Unix, OS X, and Windows, the system architecture assumes that you use a password to log in. Now, I know that it, I know that there's kind of like a thing that, no, no, the password, but, when you get into the architecture, there's so many points in the architecture where it is assumed that each account binds to um, a password. Um, and, you know, what we're trying to do with the mesh here is to replace that with a public key pair. And not just one public key pair, potentially a whole series. Uh, so we've got a bunch of ways in which we can maintain these host uh, binding so that the user can uh, log in from any of their machines. So one approach would be to use SSH certificates, which looks like the right architectural approach, only it, it probably isn't practical. It might be possible, but the problem is that the mesh is a PKI that has a particular idea, set of ideas about how accounts work. SSH is a p particular PKI that has a somewhat different idea it has an idea of the trust coming from the enterprise that's running all these servers. And so when you start to go through, you know, maybe we don't get the leverage out of that that we need. You know, if, if an enterprise wants to use the SSH certificate approach, well, we're going to have to mesh enable the enterprise. Um, it, it's not something that is practical at this point. We'd need to integrate the mesh into the SSH certificate server, and we need to think about firewalls, and it's not a straight shot for development. So what I'm doing instead is, well, the administrator device. So when Alice is adding or removing devices from her personal mesh, one of her devices is her administrator device, which has all the credentials that allow her to you know, do all the things that all the applications would do. And so what we can do is, at the time that this administration device enables a key pair for this device here, this uh, administration device can log in to each of these hosts in turn and update the authorized hosts uh, files via a script. And that's probably the way to do it. Uh, not implemented yet, but I think that that's the cleanest shot. The third way, and this is of course the way that uh, we need to go in the long term, is to integrate the mesh into SSH so that when the client connects to the SSH server on each of the hosts, it can present its mesh credential and the mesh credential is then tied to a SSHH account 
via a connection assertion and that information can then be interpreted by the host because it has the logic built into the server to understand that logic. But that will, of course, require us to have a new code deployment on each one of these devices so that it becomes a mesh SSH service. And you know, obviously that isn't here today, um, but it could be, you know, that would be the ideal way to do, go. So what we've got to hear is a mechanism that you can use today that is practical and will scale to tens of hosts without too much difficulty. But we've also got a long-term development project so that really needs far more SSH foo than I personally have, and certainly a lot more time to spend on this particular problem. So again, I'm, you know, I'm asking for help here. And if you're an SSH expert and you, know, you want to re-engineer this and you want to take it over, you know, give me an email, you know, contact me, because I'm looking for your help here. You know, the mesh mustn't just be about me. It has to be a community of developers, not just one person. And again, in the next pr presentation, I'm going to be looking at applying um, the mesh to the final killer application of the internet, which is mail. In the meantime, please like and please subscribe to my channel. It really is important because the more evidence I can show that people are interested in this stuff, the better I can, the case I can make that this is something that uh, needs to be adopted in the standards world and by the stakeholders out there on the internet. So please like and please subscribe. Thank you very much.